G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today I'm going to do a quick video on designing your own weapons. The interesting thing about weapon design is of course they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You have axes and guns and knives and different kinds of weapons, but then within those categories themselves there are loads of ways to actually design those weapons. There are millions of kinds of swords, millions of kinds of axes and so on and so forth. So what we're going to talk about specifically today is designing fantasy or more over the top weapon designs because the reality is if you're just trying to come up with a pretty basic standard variation on a, a gun or a sword or a, an axe or pole arm you can sort of google it and just find one that works and copy that but we're going to talk about coming up with original design ideas and in my opinion one of the coolest and most fun ways to start is by experimenting with the silhouette so I'm actually going to duplicate my images here of all these items and drag them across and I'm going to in Photoshop just add a color overlay so that they're black and then I'm going to flatten this so that it's all just a flat black thing and you can see by silhouette what I mean is essentially the whole thing just filled in as a black shape and now we're going to play around with that shape. So we're going to start off with the sword and one of the most fun ways to go about this is just by sort of removing and adding stuff as we please and do this sort of in a pretty experimental uh, free way. So I might want to, for example, lengthen the handle of the sword and I do this just by erasing what was there. This doesn't have to be perfect because this silhouette isn't going to be the final image. We just want to use it as a base to kind of figure out what direction we want to go in and what ends up looking pretty cool. The other thing is when we're working with a silhouette we have a very fundamental shape that we're working with so we know what can stand out or work in the favour of our design and what might not. So we can do things like mess with the shape of the blade, maybe make it a little more curvy or thin in the middle, a little more pointy at the end. Now I have taken quite a bit away from this blade and not added too much in. So I'm going to get my pen and just sort of thicken this up a little bit but still follow that same curve. And you can do some pretty drastic things. So for example I'm going to select the whole blade and I'm going to thicken the entire blade, you'll notice I put it on a weird angle so I'm just going to skew that so it follows the same angle that I previously had. So now the blade's quite a lot thicker and I can just resize it and make it quite a lot larger as well. Fantasy swords tend to be pretty epic in their shapes and often pretty large in their sizes. I mean Cloud's sword from Final Fantasy 7 case and point. This handguard is something that we can really play with too so I'm just going to start by adding a lot of stuff here and obviously it looks a bit rough at the moment they just sort of look like wings so I can sort of refine this thin it out a bit and let's add some design interest I feel like we're being a bit too tame here and sticking to the original silhouette quite closely so adding some body into this area here to add some interest making sure that we have a little bit of variety and then in the end that's actually a design I think is kind of cool so I'm going to leave that and as you can see just the silhouette itself has a pretty strong look about it and I'm going to come back to it later and add some of the details but first I'm going to play around with some of my other silhouettes so we'll move on to the axe I'll get rid of this rope here that doesn't seem to be necessary in particular and with the axe we can really mess with the silhouette especially of this uh, sharp blade bit of the axe because we can really mess with the size and the extremity of the curvature and we can really add and take away chunks from this silhouette. Now of course it is useful often to follow references so you can look up fantasy axe, fantasy sword and see what other people are doing not necessarily to copy their designs specifically but to sort of get ideas as to how the silhouette of the blade or weapon that they've created is different from the norm and use those as sort of ideas as to how you might accentuate some areas of a weapon. So I'm going to sort of mirror this extreme curve into the center of the handle there. I'm going to bring this to a shorter stop and I'll spike this out. Let's, let's do something like that. And the fun thing is as you go things will work and things won't. So uh, it's fun because just working with the silhouette first means that it's no problem to just sort of keep experimenting until you find something you're happy with. And all of a sudden after a little bit of experimenting I've actually 
uh, produce something that I'm quite enjoying visually. I really like how the blades on each side mirror each other and also how there's a nice sharp feeling on that left side. It's also quite a bit heftier. It's a much larger axe than the silhouette that we were originally working with. And again, that can work quite well with fantasy style things. So we're gonna complement that by just bringing up the size of the handle quite a bit. I'll just enlarge it and bring it over there like that. And of course we need to mirror that really spiky feeling we're going for. So I'm just going to change the tip, whatever you call it. I don't know the technical term for any of this stuff to be nice and spiky. Now, of course, if you are a hardcore weapons or historical enthusiast, uh, don't bother criticizing me. I'm quite happy to admit I have no idea what I'm doing. This is all fantasy based stuff. Next thing I'm gonna do is make this handle thinner at the base and we'll make it look like there's a bit of a, a grip here that sort of starts here and ends here. And then the end of this ax can sort of turn into a counterweight. So we'll add a nice big ball here like that. And let's just for funsies add a spike on that because there should be, you should in theory be able to stab someone from every side of your weapon because it's a weapon. Now the gun is interesting because there are many eras that the gun can be in. I mean, the same thing goes of course with swords and axes, but guns in particular tend to in stories and comics and movies and whatever, take place in modern days, be a little more historical or be really futuristic and sci-fi and completely bizarre. Uh, so let's go a little bit more along that fantasy sci-fi feeling because we've sort of been going along that with our bladed weapons so far. And we're gonna go for a nice blocky feel. So our gun at the moment has a nice sleek feel but we're gonna make it nice and chunky. And what I like to do with guns sometimes, this is one of my personal favorite things to do to make a gun nice and beasty is to make the area from the trigger come forward all the way forward like that. So I can just fill that in and fill in those lines around it. That tends to make it feel nice and hefty, but we've got to complement that of course by adding elsewhere. So let's bring down the base of this gun and we'll add a clip just emerging out from the bottom here like that. Now I'm pretty happy with how it's starting to come around, but as you can see, it's very front heavy. So we want to sort of counterbalance. It's nice to find uh, a feeling of symmetry in the weapons that you create, not necessarily from left to right, but I do mean in the sense that if you're holding something, if it looks like all of the weight is at one end, it's gonna be a little bit uh, unnatural to sort of depict in a, in a fairly normal, reasonable way. There are exceptions to this, of course, as there are with everything when it comes to design, but it's nice to have that as a bit of a general rule to make sure things feel somewhat grounded and satisfying. So with the gun here, how we might pull that back is maybe extend the silhouette up like this. It's a bit of a strange shape. It's not necessarily something that guns would have, but we're creating uh, our own designs here and they don't need to follow anything that exists in the real world. And if that's the case, we can go above and beyond. So let's really extend the bottom of this gun handle here and make it look nice and weird. Let's add some curves for the finger grips. So I'm gonna weigh it back even further by adding some mass up here. I don't necessarily know what it'll be, some sort of a scope perhaps, or a laser pointer, who knows? And I'll counterbalance that with something much smaller at the end, like a little pointy Amy thingy. <laughs> Again, I don't know the technical terms to all these things. I feel like it could be a little more foreign, a little more interesting. So I'm actually gonna grab the trigger and erase a bit inside here and start an angle that follows the angle of the gun handle. And with my silhouette addition, I'm just gonna follow that all the way down and then I'm gonna curve that into the handle. I'm actually gonna remove this divider from the trigger and the rest of the grip. And I feel like these uh, finger curves that I put in aren't really adding anything, so I'll get rid of them. In the end, I'm left with something that's definitely different to the gun silhouette that we started off with. It's still fairly recognizably a gun. We can sort of add recognizability as a gun if, uh, I'll just bring it over to the right here so I have a bit more room. If I add a little bit more here to the nozzle, just so it looks like something's gonna be coming out of this end and maybe uh, this end bit might be adding impact or ballistic firepower or something. But then the end result is something that still follows the same sort of silhouette, is recognizable as a gun, but has a lot more happening design-wise that is different and pulls it into a different genre and world setting. And last but not least, we have our trusty little dagger and we're gonna follow that nice fantasy theme that we've got happening with our more traditional 
uh, ballisticless weapons. What would you call them? Melee weapons, I suppose you could say. So I'm going to follow the, this extreme curve. Now I'm actually going to take it back and just identify something that's already happening with the silhouette. We actually have some curves that are happening. We have a curve here that goes out like that, a curve in here like that with the blade, then a bit of a straight bit, and then this bit, I suppose you could consider a bit of a curve. Now that's a pretty common setup for a blade to have a curve, straight bit, curve, inward curve for a bit of a dagger style look and we can accentuate that so what I was doing before which I'll do again is accentuating this curve I'll extend this straight bit here and I'll make it a nice pointy dagger and then I'm actually going to erase in here and extend this curve out as well but I'll make it nice and sharp and have it come back in towards the handle now we don't want it to be too top heavy so I'm going to start to erase a little bit of this to thin down this chunky area of the knife and make it nice and sharp and pointy the thing with something like daggers is you want it to look aggressive this is a weapon that is going to be stabbing people in the back and slitting throats that's primarily what it's going to be doing so you want it to look nasty so I'm going to mirror this curve in the opposite direction with the handle which you can see is happening to an extent in the silhouette but we're going to really fly with it there are a lot of weapons that follow basic geometric shape sort of patterns and systems and this sort of knife curve that goes down at the handle and up at the blade is something that happens fairly often with knives and, and daggers. So we're gonna follow this, but we're gonna accentuate it. Now we do have a handguard here. We can use it or lose it. It's completely up to the designer. Uh, I feel like we need something. So I'm actually gonna add something like that to stop the hand slipping forward, but I don't wanna have one on both sides because I think it'll be nice to uh, sort of have something a bit different. So the handle goes up to there and sort of stops, comes in and wraps around the front of the gripping hand. And as I was saying, most weapons that you wield with your hand, especially in a fantasy setting where everything's pretty gritty and uh, can be pretty weapons or combat focused, it can be nice to make sure every end of it is stabby. So on this end of the blade, I'm gonna add a spike that sort of comes around rather than have what I have on the ax and the sword, just sort of a spike that goes straight forward. This one's gonna come around so that if you're using the dagger you can sort of swing around and have it come forward with a punch so I'm pretty happy with how that's looking so far I am going to add a, an indentation for the thumb there the result at the end of all that as you can see we have some pretty clear looking silhouettes of these weapons and you can see if I hide my originals it's very obvious what they are it's very obvious where the sword is where the axe is where the gun and where the dagger is but now we can start to play around with the finer aspects of them so I'm pretty happy with how my silhouette designs have come about now that I'm ready to move on to some of the details and design elements what I'm going to do is actually lower the opacity of my silhouette so it's quite a bit lighter and I'm going to use my construction pencil now for those of you who don't know I'm using my custom brush set so I've used my ink brush in creating the silhouette because it has a really nice solid feel. I'm using my construction pencil and later on I'm going to go onto my drawing pencil. These are part of my custom brush set which is available at jazzastudios.com. The link is on the screen and in the description. It comes with a whole bunch of other stuff like paint brushes and some other refinement stuff, fine liners and so on and so forth. But I just thought I'd let you know what I'm using in case you were wondering. So now what I'm going to do is take my silhouette and with my construction pencil I'm going to sort of separate the areas. So obviously the handguard is separate to the grip here the handle and I'm going to start to rough out how I want these design elements to look so for example the handguard do I want it to be straight and thick or do I want it to be straight and really thin this is where you can play around and again we're keeping it pretty fast and loose like we did with the silhouette we're refining it a little bit so we can be a little bit more careful but of course there's no problem with making mistakes so I'm going to go through each weapon now and I'm going to play with some of these design features and you'll see that sometimes I'll do something that I'll undo and redo differently until I'm satisfied with it and uh, and then hopefully at the end I'll have four designs that I'm pretty chuffed with and I'll go through and just do some refined sketch work at the end there
Okay, so I've gone through, I've added my rough sort of sketching to my silhouettes. And as you can see, especially if I hide my silhouettes underneath, we've got designs that are starting to look pretty finalized. And even when sat next to the uh, original shapes and weapons that they were based on, they're sort of holding their own and they have a bit of a unique look and feel to them and actually wasn't too, too difficult to come up with. I did through each of them try and maintain a bit of a, an aesthetic that carries through. So for example, this sword has a bit of a royal sharp feel to it. So I'm sure that it was probably owned by some legendary warrior or king. Things like adding these embroidered uh, fancy patterns on the uh, the handle and keeping the lines on it fairly smooth and clean. Then coming across to the axe, again, it's a very clean looking weapon and we're working with the curves of the, the blade of the axe itself and working with that sort of symmetrical asymmetry in a way, I don't know if that makes sense. But essentially we're balancing this one side with the other by having this chunk missing, uh, mirroring each other, but sort of flipped. And then this area here, which is sort of scribbled in for now is going to be some sort of ornate pattern. Moving down here to the gun, we've got a bit more of a blocky feel. So everything's a bit more straightforward. As you can see, I've started to sort of interweave the shapes of the weapon and uh, there are some detailed areas. And, and really what we want to do is allude to function. Uh, so for example, something like here in the handle, I've separated these areas so that we have a grip area for the fingers and then one a little higher up for the thumb. And they're sort of separate from each other just to add some visual interest, but to also serve a function. So this is probably a button for something. This is probably some sort of event. This might be some sort of compression release. This is a cartridge area. This might be a laser pointer and this might be a scope. Basically, uh, when we're coming up with our weapons, especially sci-fi sort of gun shooty pew pew weapons, uh, we do want to make sure that they look like they do things. And then finally, we come across here to the blade. This dagger follows the same basic shape and curvature as the original dagger, but it's obviously really overstated and we're going for much more of a fantasy feel here. And this is probably sort of a mix between a primitive, but a, a, also a refined weapon. So a really masterfully crafted, um, ancient, curvy <laughs> dagger. So all that being said and done, these are my weapons laid out. And as you can see, I've flipped up the sword and the ax to be as vertical as possible. And I actually used a straight line as a reference here to match them up just to make sure that they are as vertical as possible because now I'm gonna go through and do some refined sketching. I'm gonna use my drawing pencil tool. And once I've gone through and done that, I'm also gonna go through and do some shading with my shading pencil tools, part of my brush set to make these look like finished concept art pieces. And the reason why it's helpful to have these vertical is because if I draw and hold, uh, obviously it's very difficult to draw straight lines, but if I hold shift while I draw, I can draw perfectly straight horizontal and vertical lines, which is something really useful to keep in mind.
Okay, so I've gone over my sketches with some refined line work. It's not so much line work, it's more like refined sketch work. And now I'm gonna go through and add some shading. Now there is a little trick that I'm gonna to use to make this a lot easier and cleaner. I'm gonna hide my construction lines and on a layer underneath, I'm going to go onto my line work layer here and with the magic wand select all of the empty space. Now, because I did use a textured sketchy pencil, it will select things that I don't want to select, but that doesn't matter for now. I'm going to inverse my selection and on a layer underneath, I'm going to select a blue, just so I can see clearly where the color's going. Right click and fill. And you can see quite clearly where I've obviously missed the colors. So I'm going to select my ink brush and fill that in with a nice clean blocky solid fill. This will all make sense in a moment, I promise. Okay, so now that I've done that, you can see that I've got a solid color underneath. Um, I could keep this color if I wanted to, but for now I'm actually going to just make it nice and blank white. But the reason I'm doing this, it may seem redundant because the background is already white, is uh, because I'm going to do the shading on top, but using a clipping mask, which means I won't be able to go outside the edges. To create a clipping mask, I create a blank layer on top of my silhouette here and I alt click the line between these two layers and this embeds it and sets it in there, which means that anything I draw on that layer is stuck inside the solid area that I drew. So I can actually take my bucket and paint a solid white and that will paint everything inside that shape white. And if I wanna be super tricky right now, I can actually create a background gradient to uh, hopefully create an interesting design effect. So using the gradient tool, I'm just gonna drag it out like this and you can see now I have these solid white weapons. To make them stand out even more I'm going to double click on my base layer where the clipping mask is added and add a drop shadow. A nice black one but I'll thicken it out a bit and add some distance so it doesn't look too photoshoppy. And then the idea here is that they look a little more like solid objects. So I'm liking how they sit at the moment. I think that looks decent. Now I'm gonna add another layer to my clipping mask and you can add as many layers to a clipping mask as you want where basically, again, the same rules apply. Everything is connected to that base layer and won't go over the edges. And now one by one, I'm actually going to go through these weapons and using my different shading pencils, I'm gonna go through and add a shading to them. I'm gonna start off with my light shading like this and I'll just go in the areas that need some embedding and a little bit of shading and some variation and I like to do everything with my light shader first because once I've done that I can go to my dark shader and add some of the more solid shading areas so these are gonna act more like solid shadows so you can see slowly but surely it's coming up to be quite solid and we're getting a look that looks still like a concept art piece but like a solid weapon design Here we are at the end of our video tutorial on designing weapons. And as you can see, I'm just gonna move these so you can see all of them in the image here. Uh, they turned out pretty reasonably. I think especially if you compare them to the original uh, designs. In fact, I'm gonna bring them up now. You can see that while they're good, they're sort of plain and they may not specifically serve the purposes for an epic adventure or fantasy or something a little more custom or tailored or unique in its world setting. So by going through that process 
of playing with the silhouette, adding some design features and fiddling around with it through your sketching and then going through the refinement process, you can have a design that you're happy with. You can also, you know, frame it in whatever way you like. I might get rid of that uh, background color. It was helpful while I was shading, but now that they're sort of done, I'm quite happy with having them on white. Another thing I can do to make them stand out even more is add a stroke, which is like a solid outline embellishment. And obviously you can add really thick strokes, but I'm just gonna add a three, let's go four point stroke. And that just adds a little touch more solidity to the silhouette, the outlines of the images. And now you can see that they're really holding their own a lot more. So I'm really happy with how they turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial on creating fantasy weapon designs and uh, make sure to check out more videos by checking out my youtube channel draw with jazza and of course if you're interested in the brush set they're available at jazzastudios.com thanks for joining ladies and gentlemen and until next time i'll see you later thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel to see new content every week check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there if you want to support my work and get a few goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, and get yourself something nice. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.